Okay, uh, I want to thank you uh, again for coming back to this last lecture on elliptic homogenization. Uh, so uh, today we're going to s still looking at the same problem, the large scale regularity uh, of a solution to a elliptic equation with uh, oscillatory periodic coefficient. So uh, last time, yesterday, you see that we were able to use the compactness uh, method uh, to establish uh, the interior uh, and also the boundary regularity, uh, Lipschitz regularity uh, for the solution. However, uh, toward the end of the lecture, you'll see that it's uh, Compared to the interior case, the boundary uh, regularity uh, is quite involved uh, because in order to apply the compactness method, we will have to a priori prove that uh, the boundary corrector, uh, the Dirichlet corrector for the Dirichlet problem, the Neumann corrector for the Neumann problem, uh, is uh, Lipschitz. Uh, uniformly uh, in order to carry this uh, uh, compactness scheme. Okay, so, uh, and that's not a tr trivial uh, task, even for periodic coefficients. Uh, uh, we have several steps. So today we're going to uh, present uh, a different approach to, to the problem, and this somehow, this method is somehow, uh, it's uh, somewhat related to the talk uh, you, you you had in the morning that is in order to, to prove the Lipschitz uh, estimate we're going to look at excess, excess uh, decay of the solution uh, you set up by look at the difference of the solution with a linear function you you you, you uh, minimize all, all the among all the linear functions you'll see okay so uh, the, the the setup is the same we're, we're working with uh, a, a family of uh, second order elliptic operators uh, in divergence form uh, with a parameter epsilon. And uh, we're assuming the coefficient I is uh, real, bounded, measurable, uh, and uniformly elliptic. And also, uh, A is one periodic, okay? It's, a, it's, it's all the same as the previous lectures. So precisely, you're assuming the, the matrix is bounded, and uh, the, it's, it's, it's uh, positively definite, and uh, it's periodic with respect to the integer lattice. Uh, so we can all, uh, notation-wise, we're just uh, working with the scalar equation, but all the uh, uh, theorems and proofs extend directly to uh, second order systems in divergence form. Uh, there's, there's no real difficulty. Nothing special is used for the scalar case. Okay. So, uh, so we proved this theorem yesterday using compactness method. Uh, this is an in, uh, interior uh, large scale Lipschitz estimate. I mentioned how once you get this estimate, then you can combine with uh, a small scale estimate by a blow up argument follows from the classical result uh, to uh, obtain a full scale Lipschitz. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, but here, we do not need any smoothness uh, conditions on the coefficient, just uh, being bounded and measurable, but elliptic and periodic. So you have a solution for the simplicity. I'm also assuming the right-hand side is zero. Uh, you have a solution in a unit ball, then you look at uh, the L2 average of, of the solution, uh, the gradient of the solution on the ball of radius R. R is between epsilon and one. Uh, so the, the most important case actually is the case R equal to epsilon. Once you have that, then all the, uh, the remaining uh, range follows. It's bounded by the L, L2 average of, of the gradient of the solution on a ball of radius one. Okay, so this is what we, uh, you see the, the, the uh, detailed proof yesterday. There, there are two steps. The first step is the compactness. You gain one uh, improvement 
And then in the second step, you uh, use an inductive uh, to, it, to uh, iterate the, the gain you, you obtain in, in lemma one. All right, so that's, that's, the, that's the idea. Okay, so the, uh, today we're going to talk about instead of a compact disk, this is proved by contradiction. Uh, you argue by contradiction. We're going to look at a, a direct approach. Uh, this is uh, uh, due to uh, Charles Smart, who is here, and also uh, Scott Armstrong here. Uh, the advantage to, to uh, of uh, and the disadvantage uh, compares to method here. That, so this direct method, uh, there's no compactness it, theorem is needed, and uh, we do not need to involve uh, correctors, at least uh, not in a direct way. And therefore, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, applicable in a uh, non-periodic setting. Uh, even in the periodic setting, we can use it to derive boundary uh, regularity because uh, we do not need to a priori prove uh, the boundary character is Lipschitz. Uh, so, uh, so it, it works in a in, in a setting of a peer, almost periodic, and uh, and also the random case uh, you you'll hear more about next week. Okay, uh, the disadvantage is that uh, this 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 approach will require a uh, a, a convergence rate, uh, even though it's it's you only need a Dini rate, quite very weak Dini rate, and uh, this uh, in 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 a practice uh, this uh, the convergence rate can be established by using. Uh, uh, so called approximate co correctors. Uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, toward the end how to, uh, and what is approximate corrector in an almost periodic setting here. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so what is this? Uh, so the, the idea is, you'll see this already in other lectures. So, so you're gonna measure the, uh, the excess uh, decay rate uh, relative to a linear function. So u, u epsilon is a solution. Okay, so we're going to uh, subtract a arbitrary linear function, and uh, m here is a vector, so it's a dot product here. M is a scalar case. Uh, okay, if if you have a vector, then uh, if you have a system, then you can have to deal with uh, a matrix here. And, uh, and then you average uh, uh, the, the difference in, in L2 in, in the ball radius R, and then you normalize the quantity uh, by dy this by R, because this will be in, in the scale of the derivative. Okay, so then you uh, take the infimum among all vectors uh, uh, M and all uh, real numbers R. So you try to uh, approximate your solution on average sense by by linear uh, uh, linear functions. Uh, okay, so uh, so the idea is that, is I suppose you have a solution say in, in B one, and uh, epsilon is, is small if uh, it's less than one half. Well, I already indicate that if epsilon is greater than one half, all the results follow from the classical one here. So, all, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show that this quantity, this is already scaled. H of R is uh, bounded uniformly by by the L2 average of a solution on a ball of radius one, and this is uh, this is true for any R between epsilon and one one half. Okay, so if uh, be between one half and, and one, that would be a trivial uh, statement. So for any R greater than this uh, small scale, but uh, less uh, and up to some uh, fixed constant. Okay, so this is the goal. So once you have this, then the Lipschitz estimate, uh, large scale Lipschitz estimate follows. Okay, so the key observation in this scheme is, is the following. It's approximation here. So idea, so what is the idea? Uh, so, you, so, so we try to prove this is uniformly bounded. So we're gonna look, compare uh, the f this function at the two different scales, r and theta times r. Theta is some small but fixed number here. 
So let's just try to look at what is uh, each seed of R. Okay, by definition, it's just uh, the scale, the average, I mean, scale average in Fumio of U epsilon uh, minus uh, a linear function. Okay, so the first step is that you use a triangle, very simple. So you're going to replace uh, your solution by a function W to be chosen later. Uh, then you, of course, by the triangle, you go, that's the error term you're going to make. So the difference here, there will be u epsilon minus w, and you still integrate, uh, you still average this on the b on the ball radius theta r, and divide by theta r because that's in the definition of a theta r here. Uh, just first step, it's nothing more than a triangle. Okay, so in the next step, we'll say this w, it's supposed to be a, a very nice function. Okay, and so for a nice function, say uh, in, the, in the C1 alpha, uh, has some scaling properties, uh, then if you go from uh, uh, R to the scale theta R, this excess decay will be small, so you have have one half uh, uh, factor come up. Okay, so this is a pure property of this function W to be chosen later. You can choose whatever your function you have uh, you like. Okay, and so here, so that is the second inequality here. The second term here is copied. All right. In the next step, we're going to go back from W to U e to the solution U sub epsilon again. Okay. So you simply replace W by U sub epsilon, and uh, you, then you see that the definition is just this. This go back to the definition of H of R, but you carry a factor one half. Okay, so when you do that, the triangle in inequality will introduce another error term. When you combine this with this term here, it's bounded by uh, a constant which depends on theta divided by r times this L2 average of the difference u epsilon um, uh, uh, and the w here. Okay, so the choice of w is yours. So we want so. Uh, so the choice we're going to make later on is that uh, we're going to choose that W to be a solution of a constant coefficient, second order, uh, in some ball of radius R, and we have all the regularity we wanted. And so in particular, the function is in C1 alpha, and so this term give you, give you one half if theta is sufficiently small. Okay? So that's all the idea that it is uh, in this uh, scheme. So, so this uh, uh, that is the uh, uh, key observation. So, so roughly speaking, what this means is that uh, if you have a function which can be well approximated by some uh, 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 C1 function with a C1 alpha estimate a scaled version of C1 alpha. Uh, for all the scale greater than this uh, e uh, parameter epsilon, then your function will be uh, Lipschitz. Okay? It doesn't have to be a solution. Right? This is a general kind of a, a statement here. All right, so let's just see how do we carry out this uh, scheme for in the interior case. And uh, later on, I will just mention how do we set up for boundary estimate. And the idea is the same. It gets, the technical it gets a little complicated, but the main idea is already going to be shown in the interior case. All right, so again, we go back to this function of HR, which measures the excess decay of your solution uh, relative to a linear function. Okay, so you take an infimum among all uh, uh, vector m and uh, a, a real number r. Okay, so let's see this uh, infimum is obtained by some vector I'm going to call m r tilde. All right, so the infimum uh, is still taken with respect to q. That's the definition of uh, MR. So MR tilde is just uh, some uh, vector uh, which uh, achieve uh, the infimum here. 
Okay, so then I'm going to uh, take the magnitude of uh, this vector MR, which de certainly depends on R, of course, also depend on the solution. U epsilon, uh, call this uh, quantity by H of R, little H of R. Okay, so, so then let's see how we, uh, uh, again, we, uh, we want to estimate the gradient. In this setup here, Everything is expressed in terms of the solution. You do not want to involve the gradient of the solution because we know much about, uh, less about the, uh, uh, about the solution of, uh, to, uh, uh, of the equation here. You want to set this up in terms of the solution itself here. So, but, uh, but as you know, uh, it, uh, you, can, you, can, you can bound the average of the gradient by the average of a solution uh, by Cartropoly. Okay, so here is that you, by you, you, the price you pay, you go from B of R to B2 of R, and you can subtract any constant because you, you, you if there is a solution, you subtract constant is also a solution. You take in, take in film uh, in Q here. Okay, so this quantity can be bounded by capital H of 2R uh, plus uh, little h of 2R because that just uh, you, again by a triangle, you put a MR tilde here and then you just, just a triangle inequality. Okay, so remember that we want to bound this uh, L2 average of the gradient on the ball of radius R uh, uniformly. So now it suffice to bound uh, these two terms, h of 2r and the little h of 2r. For any r between epsilon and 1 half, we cannot go below 1 half. Uh, so, and, uh, and, and so we're working with uh, bounded measurable coefficients. There's no smoothness, or co uh, coefficient, uh, smoothness assumption on the coefficient here. All right, so that's, so, so, so now what, what I want to uh, convince you is that now the problem is how do you control these two quantity, capital H of 2R and the little H of 2R here. These are the definitions. Okay, do you have any questions uh, so far? Okay, so if not, like, I want to stay a general uh, theorem. So this uh, uh, a version of this theorem can be found in a paper by uh, Armstrong and Smart. But uh, the, the, this version here is it's, uh, uh, it's appearing in one of my papers here. Uh, I can try to f formalize the procedure here. So so here you have uh, s you you sim you you. You have two, uh, I mean, two functions. Okay, it has nothing to do with PDE here. It's just uh, a, a, a pure, uh, 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 I don't know. It's a calculus uh, problem here. And you can find a proof of this uh, theorem uh, in the lecture notes. There's a detailed proof. It does not involve much. There's a, a Fubini theorem. Uh, that's all. Okay. The, so you have two functions, uh, capital H of R and a little h of R, and I'm assuming there's two functions, two negative, uh, defined between zero and one. Okay, and you have a parameter epsilon here. Uh, I don't want to assume this function is, uh, is increasing, but I, want to, but I do want to assume that you can compare the quantity of this uh, uh, this function capital H if you go from R to 2R. So for T between R and 2R, the values are all bounded by H of R. Okay, so the, the properties are all modeled by looking at uh, uh, the application we have in mind here. Okay, so that's one condition. The second condition is that for the little H of T, and I want that for any t between r and 2r, the difference controlled of ht and hs can be controlled by h of 2r. Okay, and so that's uh, the second condition. The third condition uh, is uh, that the value of uh, the function h at the seed of r 
uh, is bounded by one half of h of r multiplied by this arrow here, term here. So here is the omega of a omega of epsilon over r multiplied by h of 2r plus little h of 2r. And this actually is the quantity we try to control. Okay, so assuming this is true for any r between epsilon and one half. Okay, there's a fourth condition that uh, this uh, omega is, uh, say, uh, increasing the continuous function, omega of zero is zero, but I want this to, the, the condition to also satisfy a Dini integral condition. So in particular, if omega of t is a power of t for some positive uh, number, then this condition is satisfied. Okay, so this is a, a Dini condition. And the conclusion is that uh, then h of r plus little h of r is bounded by the value at one, by their value at one here. Okay, so r is any number between epsilon and one here. Okay, so that's, so this estimate here is the one we, we wanted to control, to bound here. So h1, and the little h1 are the, can be bounded by the L2 average of the solution on the scale one. So, you, so we're able to go from scale epsilon and to scale one. That is the idea. Okay, do you have any questions? Okay, so going, questions? So going back to, uh, uh, to this theorem here, you see this is the, the, the quantity we had earlier that uh, we want to control h of r, and you have this. So, so now the problem is that how do you control this error term? So in other words, if you have a solution, can you approximate in the L2 norm? by some function with C1 alpha estimate. And you also want the, uh, the, the control, uh, the rate is uh, satisfied the Dini condition. So this will be done by a convergence rate uh, in homogenization. So as far as the, uh, the scheme is concerned, I haven't used anything related to uh, the operator. Oh, okay, or oh, anything related to homogenization here. So that's, so we're going to go back to the uh, homogenization problem. So the problem now is I suppose you have a solution on the ball of radius 2R, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and R is greater than the parameter epsilon, and we want to find some W and satisfy some uh, <laughs> equations with constant coefficients so that the average, the average the, the, uh, of U epsilon, L2 average of U epsilon minus W is bounded by uh, a small quantity, omega of epsilon over R times the L2 average of the solution on a ball of radius 2R. And so uh, further, we want this uh, uh, quantity omega to satisfy the Dini. Okay, so that is the problem. And, uh, and also by rescaling, you, it suffice to prove this, uh, 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 this, this, this fact for the scale one. Uh, the operator in its form scales well. Uh, so if you can do this for uh, each, for r equal to one, then you can do this for, for any r, okay? So once you have this estimate, and that will produce uh, this inequality we wanted, and that is, and that will be, that will be, uh, that, and this will allow us to, to use the general scheme uh, in the previous page. Okay, so now it becomes a convergence rate problem uh, here. Okay, so the, so I want to show you uh, a, a fair amount of convergence rate. This is a, uh, uh, 
uh, not necessarily sharp, and uh, because we do not need sharp convergent ray, we only need a ray that is Dini, uh, Dini uh, here. So we have a, a bounded Lipschitz domain. You, 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 you have you have a, a DD class problem. Okay, uh, let's just look at the case. Well, the right hand side is zero, and the boundary data is F. Okay, so. Uh, U0 is the solution of the homogenized problem. So in other words, uh, U0 satisfy uh, the equation, the U0 satisfy the equation for the operator L0, the homogenized operator in omega with the same boundary data uh, 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 as uh, uh, this one here. So the, uh, the estimate is that you can, the L2, the L2 norm of the difference is bounded by uh, epsilon to the sum power alpha for some alpha positive. That's all we need in order to carry out the scheme. So the Lipschitz estimate requires little uh, as far as the uh, convergence rate is concerned. Uh, if you do have a symmetry, you can actually take alpha to be one half, but we will not need that. Okay. So all we need is some alpha positive, and uh, so uh, because uh, that will give you uh, a Dini uh, convergence rate. Yeah. All right, so how do you prove this? So we we'll go back to the s uh, stuff we talked about in lecture two, Con establishing convergence rate. Uh, so we're gonna look at u epsilon minus u zero minus uh, epsilon times the character, and then you multiply by a cutoff near the boundary, and then times uh, a smoothing of uh, gradient of u zero. Uh, remember, we do not assume any smoothness conditions on the coefficient, so here we'll have to smooth out uh, the solution here. We do not know the character is, is bounded. We know it's bounded in L2 on every uh, uh, cell there. All right, so uh, actually the, the method we uh, presented on, on the second lecture give us this, uh, this estimate. So you can actually bound, this actually give you the convergence rate in, in H1. Uh, it's bounded by epsilon times the L2 norm of the gradient uh, of the two derivative, second order derivative, in the interior away from the boundary by epsilon. Okay. Well, this is omega minus omega epsilon. Omega epsilon is a layer, it's a boundary layer uh, of a th a thickness epsilon. So this integral taking place away from the boundary, but you do have a second order derivative. In the second term, it's no problem, you do have an epsilon here. In the third term, you integrate in the boundary layer, but there's no epsilon uh, uh, in front of the norm here. Okay, so we we'll, uh, and then by a Pancare, you can just uh, this give you the L two norm of a W epsilon, and then you just simply throw this uh, uh, this term to the right hand side. You have L two norm uh, for the difference U epsilon and U zero. Okay, and you still have uh, the same right hand side. Okay, so the, so the, so now so the, now the goal is to generate some powers for for each of this term. The second term we don't need to worry about. The epsilon is already here. Uh, we can control the L2 norm of the gradient, uh, and we have to generate some power of epsilon from for the from the f uh, first and and, uh, and, uh, and and the last term here. Okay. So that is uh, the idea, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how do we put up, generate a power from, uh, f for the first and, and the last term. For the first term, you, we can use the interior estimate, but remember U0 is it's a solution of uh, equation with constant coefficients, so the interior is, uh, you, have, you do have an interior estimate, 
And uh, if you use the second order uh, interior estimate, it, it gives you, and also the, uh, uh, the Hilders inequality, it will generate a power of uh, epsilon to the negative one half uh, minus uh, one over p times the uh, LP norm of, uh, of, of the gradient here. And p is uh, any number greater than true. Okay? All right, so the, uh, uh, so, so, so that, and then you, remember you still have an epsilon here, so you put this back, and so that will kill uh, a, a power of one, so you're still left with uh, uh, one half minus one over p. Uh, P is greater than two, uh, so this power here is positive. Okay, so the, the, the problem here now is that you, the price you pay is that the P will be greater than two, and, uh, and now we can use uh, so-called Mayer's type estimate to bound this, the LP norm for some P greater than two, which depend on the ellipticity, uh, so, uh, and uh, times the, uh, H1 norm of the boundary data. So together you got a power sigma. Sigma is one half minus one over P. That P greater than two, so this will be positive. Okay, so this argument does not require any uh, regularity on the coefficient, and also uh, it works uh, for Lipschitz domain. Okay, no more than Lipschitz domain, omega there. Okay, so any, any questions? All right, so, um, so that's the convergence rate. I mean, that's, uh, however, that's not enough. Uh, so here we have one more step to go uh, to, de to generate the uh, approximation uh, estimate we, we need it. So again, we, uh, here's a theorem, we have a solution, in a, say, in a ball of radius two, and then I claim that there is a, a solution in a ball of radius one for the homogenized uh, 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 equation by the ball is being B1, so that uh, the L2 average of uh, U epsilon minus W is bounded by epsilon to the power alpha times the L2 uh, average of the solution for some positive alpha here, okay? So the, so, so the, the, the difference here is that we do not need uh, this function W to be a solution in B2. So we can work with a, a, a smaller ball and uh, that give us uh, freedom to choose the W here. So the W here is not necessarily the homogenized solution because we do not even specify the boundary data. Uh, uh, for U epsilon in B2. 